I had Dr. Gabin for several accounting classes and you know, he's well known, he's a great, great professor. Um, but some of the biggest lessons I learned from him were actually outside of the, uh, were outside of the classroom that uh, really has made him one of the most influential professors that I had at JMU. He's a guy that absolutely cares about the JMU community, whether it's the faculty, whether it's the, the students, or just the overall community is one thing that just has really impressed me over the years. And even, even now, most recently, when he's talked at graduation ceremonies, that kind of thing, he's just done a phenomenal job. I remember uh, it was the end of the semester, and I remember I had a big accounting exam with him, and I'm writing my answers down in the actual book. Well, he starts doing his countdown, and I'm still checking my answers, that kind of thing. And with about, when he said, you know, minute left, I realized I had not moved my answers over into the blue book, which is the answer book, right? So I'm furiously trying to write them in the blue book, and, you know, he's doing the countdown, and all of a sudden he says, you know, pencils down. And I kid you not, I bet I had my pencil up for maybe a half a second after he said pencils down, and he said, Mr. Nash, pencils down. So I put my pencil down and he, you know, called you up there. I took up my book and I said, hey, I didn't get a chance to, I just, I didn't, I, I forgot to transfer him over to my the Blue Answer book. And he's like, Mr. Nash, you think a future employer is going to give you a second chance? And so, you know, I called my parents just to prepare them. Hey, it isn't going to be good. Well, we end up getting the exam grades back, but it was obvious that he had somebody take my answers out of the book. I saw him a couple weeks later. He was having dinner by himself in a restaurant and I was there with some other friends. We we're kind of celebrating the end of the end of the school year. And I went over and I talked to him just to, you know, say hello and you know thank him for that. He said, sometimes you just need compassion. And there's very few things in life that are do or die. Those lessons have stuck with me even today. And it's some of the it's you know one of the most vivid memories of my of my time at JMU. He just, he had a way of impacting students and I'm sure it's not just me, he's impacted in a way like that. It's whether it's through an interaction one-on-one -on -one, like with myself, whether it's through some presentation he's given, whether it's through a graduation ceremony, he's touched a lot of students' lives at JMU for sure. When you name a building for someone, that's what it should represent is that it's someone that has given back in significant ways, not in one way, but in lots of different ways to really round out a, round out a community. I think that's what they've done. Here's a person that just wasn't one dimensional by any aspect. It's, uh, there's a person that has given back to the, to the university in lots of different ways. If you think about the Gabins and what they've done and how they have really embraced the community and how they've gone beyond, beyond just the curriculum that they teach or that they specialize in, they've given back in so many different ways. When I heard the news, I was certainly thrilled that, uh, that they were, they were going to do this because I think it's a, it's a great and, and, and uh, a fitting, um, honor for the Gabins. Um, and it's, for me, it's an honor to be able to support something that acknowledges both the Gabins and what they do for the university. So I think it's a, it's, it's tremendous. And uh, I'm certainly, certainly happy to help uh, contribute to those efforts. I first met Dr. Gabin when I was 17 or 18 years old. And immediately upon seeing him, seeing the way he walked, seeing the way he talked, seeing the way he interacted with everyone, seeing his aura, his presence, I knew that he was built different. I knew this brother was a different breed, absolutely. And then when he opened his mouth to talk and tell us that we ought to be the standard bearers, the standard bearers, hold it up firmly for black excellence in all aspects of our person, as a scholar, as an athlete, as a Christian, as a leader, as a thinker, as a family man, as a philanthropist, whatever it was, we were to excel and achieve. And so I took that charge very seriously so that every stage of my life, I had Dr. Gabin's voice ringing in my mind to say, look, I gotta be the best I possibly could be. Fast forward a few years later, then uh, I am interviewing for uh, neurosurgical residency programs and I look at University of Virginia. Now I know that's close to JMU, so I caught up Dr. Gabin and his wife, Joe, and I said, can I come over for some food, home cooked meal, I'm gonna be in the area. He said, sure. Not only did I come over for food, we played cards, we laughed and we danced and listened to music and he actually let me stay over and we drove to UVA the next morning, early in the morning for my interview. Then he picked me up and drove me back to JMU. And in that conversation, that car ride, it just felt like a father and a son, you know, just protecting me and covering me and making sure that I was okay. The success that I've been able to achieve individually in my life is a testament to my faith in God and the impact and the influence directly linked to Dr. Gavin. I met Dr. Gabby when I was 17 or 18 years old, and at the time, I was one of the top high school football players in the country. He said, Mr. Tolles, 
you a bad boy on that football field. But I want you to know, you're part of the 0.001% of people who could actually make it in pro ball. And because of your athletic ability and you smart, you're going to make it without a shadow of a doubt. So I ain't worried about you. But who I am worried about is the other 99%. Those young black boys from poor communities that look like you and they look up to you all because you can play ball. So just like you a bad boy on that football field, I need you to be a bad boy in the classroom. And I need you to be a bad boy in your community. And I need you to be a bad boy in business because I need you to be the example that those young black boys need to see. So Dr. Gavin, I've never forgotten your words. And I also wanna thank you for being the example that I've always needed to see. And I'm confident that every student that walks through that building will be inspired the same way you've inspired me and you've inspired so many others. So congratulations on such a great accomplishment.